<laughs> Mary Daly, very firm yesterday. We are not behind the curve. Do you agree? Look, there are risks on both sides. I mean, let's step back. I think it's worth a step back and say, why do we have inflation running the way it's running? Two things, supply and demand. Uh, the demand is something we can influence through monetary policy. The supply constraints, people and goods, uh, less so. In, in, in fact, very little uh, can we do about that. But two things are happening at the same time. So the question is how quickly, and this has always been the question, how quickly are the supply chain constraints going to leave us? And it looks right now like they're not, they're going to take some time. So slowing down some demand is what monetary policy does. I think it's appropriate. I don't think we're behind the curve in that sense because we don't affect a big part of why there is inflation. That said, I do think we need to move now uh, to try to control inflation. That is something I firmly believe. Well, move now, but then move how often after that and how fast? Yeah. Uh, the, you know the questions yeah. out there, the 50 basis points in March, uh, the seven uh, rate increases proposed by yeah. Bank of America. Uh, where do you come down on that? So, let me, again, let me step back from it. So we're going to stop the tapering in March. I would be supportive of 25 basis point increase in March. Could we do 50? Yeah. Uh, should we? Well, I'm a little less uh, convinced of that right now. But we'll see how the data turn out in the next couple of weeks. And then when we're sufficiently away from zero, we can argue what above zero is, 125 basis points, 100 basis points. Then we start normalizing the balance sheet, start bringing the balance sheet down, which, of course, will also reduce accommodation. So it's really a, a two-step process here. Uh, yes, we want to increase the Fed funds rate, which is our primary tool of monetary policy. At the same time, we want to start removing the accommodation by shrinking the balance sheet. Both things have to happen in tandem, in my mind. Let's step into March and then build on your comments on the balance sheet, President Harker. On March, tell me the data that you are looking at, the data that will influence and shape that decision. A lot of people de-emphasizing Friday's payrolls print. We would all love a deeper understanding of whether you will look at that how you would process yeah. that information, given the Omicron scare as well, and additionally, the data you'd be looking at going into the March call. Yeah, so, uh, you know, I heard some of the comment uh, earlier from some of your uh, colleagues or tweet people who have tweeted about maximum employment. I think we're there. So really, this is an inflation story in my mind. And so what we're looking at is the signs that inflation, at least the precursors to inflation, like the supply chain issues, are starting to mitigate. If I don't see that, then I would be for a more aggressive policy. Right now, I think four 25 basis point increases this year is appropriate, but there's a lot of risk here. There's risk both to the upside of inflation, that is worse than, uh, than I would anticipate, but there's also some risk that uh, inflation will start to ease faster than we have anticipated. I think that is a lesser risk and is a good risk to have. But this is where we need to keep flexible with respect to policy. We can't define a path right now and just stick to it. We've got to look at the data. And to me, primarily, it's the inflation data.